So there are four ways we're going to cover adding Typeform to your Webflow project. The first is really straightforward. It links out from a link in your project to Typeform's website. Second is a full page option. This embeds a Typeform on a dedicated page inside your project that takes up the whole page. The third option is a pop-up. This adds a script when the site is published. It shows a clickable button, a call to action that launches our Typeform in a pop-up. And the fourth thing we're going to quickly cover is a way to put the form into an existing div block. We'll fit it into a responsive layout we already built in Webflow. Okay, first part, two things here. We have our Webflow project, that's one, and we have our type form. We created a form in type form, that's two. And what we'll do in Webflow is select any link. Here we have a button and we'll open up our link settings now, you'll probably want to make sure your type form is published first, and we'll head on over to the Share tab. This right here, this link, is what we want to copy. Back in Webflow, let's paste that link we just copied. That's it. That's part one. Second part, full page option. Here's a blank page. This part will also go very quickly. We'll add an embed element. This is a custom embed element where we can paste in our own code. We'll add that to our project. Over in Typeform, back in the Share tab, this time let's embed this into a web page. We'll make that selection. A few options at the top, we'll use Full Page. Get the code, let's grab it, let's copy it to our clipboard, back in Webflow, paste. Once it's pasted in, let's save and close, and this is what our Typeform looks like. Except no. Let's publish our project, because the embed will only appear on the published or exported site. And when we do, this is what it looks like, a fully functional form. Now, how do we use it? We can link to this page from any other place on the web. A common pattern here is adding the link to a separate page. When someone clicks on this link, we want to take them to the full page we just created that has the type form embedded. If we go into preview mode and we press that button, nothing. That's because we have to press publish. But rest assured, on the published site, clicking that link on this page takes us to our full contact page we just created. But that's a full page, a dedicated page. Okay, third part, what about a pop-up? So we're back on the same design we used in part one. This is our button that linked out to Typeform's site. Let's delete that button from earlier and we'll go to the add panel. And let's add the custom embed element where our button was. We'll just drag that right in. And once we've done that, all we have to do is go back to Typeform. Same route as earlier, we'll go to share. Just like before, we'll choose to embed this form in a web page. Now, our goal is to have this form pop up. So let's select pop up. And here we have a few options. What's pop up mode, it doesn't matter because what we're really here for is in our button settings. Let's change the text to whatever we want. We'll do get started. Let's experiment with font size. We can preview this visually. Let's take a look at border radius, we can do this in a percentage format. And finally, we can also set the button color. We'll change it to white. Now, we're all thinking the same thing. The contrast might be a bit low in the preview here. That's fine, because we've done all we came here to do. Let's get the code by pressing get the code, and let's copy it to our clipboard. Back in Webflow, we have our custom embed open here. Let's paste in that code snippet. Save and close. Let's go up and publish our changes. And when we do, and we go in and preview our site, it's terrible. Maybe not terrible, but it could be a lot better because contrast. Our goal is to change the text color. We want the text color to be red so it matches the background color. So let's go to our color picker and pick that value. Let's copy that hex code value to our clipboard. Once we do that, we can go back into our code editor inside the custom embed element, and we're going to search our code. We're just pressing Command F on Mac or Control F on PC, and we're typing color. And what we're looking for is color colon white. What does that indicate? It means the color for the text here is white, which is probably why we have low contrast against the button, which is white. Let's change it to our red color. We're just replacing the existing hex value with the one we copied to our clipboard earlier. But that's what we have to do to change the text color. And what about things like font? Well, all we do is search for font right here. We're looking for font family. Because it lists the font Helvetica, we can replace or add a value first. We'll type the font we want to use right there, a comma afterwards and not before. And when we do and save and close our work, let's close our search because we're done with that. We'll publish now and check the site in Chrome. And 
It looks pretty good. If we click that button, you'll see the pop-up is working exactly as expected. Is it strange that pressing a button that says get started opens a pop-up that presents yet another button that says get started? Probably, but that's type form in a pop-up. Now, before we wrap up, we want to show a fourth option, another option Typeform has. Here's a layout we already created in Webflow. It's sort of a side-by-side. -side. And this iPad, it's just a PNG sitting inside a div block. It's just an image of an iPad with a white background inside a div block we called iPad Wrapper. But here's the interesting part. We want to put a responsive Typeform inside the iPad. How do we do it? Like this. Let's drag a code embed, a custom code embed, into that div block. What we're dragging in will be a sibling of the iPad image and a child of the iPad wrapper. And it's a mess, but that's okay. By default, in HTML embed, its position is static, but we want to absolutely position this element. So we'll do that in a second, but here's how absolute positioning works. When an element's position is set to absolute, it places itself, it positions itself inside its parent element. But it'll only do that if its parent element, the element it's sitting inside, is set to relative positioning or any other position that's not static. How does that apply here? Well, the wrapper it's in is, by default, set to static. So to do this, one, we'll select the wrapper it's in. This is the wrapper called iPad wrapper. Then we'll set its position to relative. Two, we'll select our custom code embed and we'll set its position to absolute with absolute positioning set to take up the full space available. Then three, so it fits inside the iPad screen, we'll adjust the top positioning to be a percentage of the total size. Then we can adjust this on all four sides at once by holding shift and dragging. We'll land on 5%. That means as the size of the wrapper, as the size of the div block that our iPad is in and our type form is in, as that resizes, it remains responsive. Now, could we publish and test? Sure, but it'll look like this. That's because we haven't pasted in the actual code snippet. So over in Typeform, under Share, let's go over and embed it in a web page. And this time we'll use their standard option. That's the one that comes up by default. And we'll change the height to 100%. We'll choose that percentage unit from the dropdown. So we have a width and height at 100% each. Let's get that code snippet and let's copy it to our clipboard. Back in Muse, that's the wrong screen. Back in Webflow, let's open up our code editor. Then when we do, we'll paste in that snippet we just copied to our clipboard. Save and close, that should work. Let's go up and publish our changes, and that's it. On the published site, the code embed respects the rules we set inside the designer. Because we used 5%, that extra space around the edges, it scales proportionally with the iPad. And if it's too tight on smaller screens, we can go to our tablet view and select our container. This is our top level container. And since it's using Flexbox, all we have to do is change the direction to vertical. That way things stack vertically. And with the magic of video editing, let's cut to the published site. That's the published site. So we covered linking out to Typeform. We covered creating a separate page for our type form. We did a version with a button that opens a pop-up. And we walked through a side-by-side -side design, which embeds the type form in a picture of an iPad. And that's connecting type form to a Webflow project.